What's good YouTube, it's your boy Demusa, more than just a pen. Today's video, we are gonna be talking about the top five keys when it comes to realistic drawing. And most of these things that I'm gonna be talking about are things that don't get mentioned that often and go pretty underrated, um, but they make the biggest difference when it comes to realistic drawing. And a lot of them you will realize after I've mentioned them, you'll be like, yeah, he really does that, doesn't he? But anyways, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Dean Musa. Musa and I'm a portrait artist, ballpoint pen artist and every now and then I like to do mixed media type of situation. Drawing that I'm going to be showing you guys today's video is actually done with pencil and ballpoint pen so it is mixed media um, but as I said I don't do it very often and I'm pretty happy with this piece. So sit back, relax, enjoy the video and make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let's get into this. So tip number one is analyzing your reference photo. Now this is something that goes pretty underrated. A lot of people don't really think about this because it's like, that should be automatic, shouldn't it? Analyzing my reference photo. No, a lot of people see an image, I like the image, that's pretty cool. But they don't actually think, okay, that's the image I wanna draw. Now let me break it down, really look at the reference photo saying, okay, where's the light source coming from? Okay, it's coming from the right side. So that means this left side, this left side is gonna be, okay, coming from the left side, sorry. I don't made that mistake. What am I doing? Coming from the left side, so the right side is going to be more dark, naturally. You know what I mean? Things like that. A lot of people don't really take the time to really look at the image, really look at it. Look at it. Yeah, and say, okay, this is how I'm going to go about it. Okay, how would I start the drawing? And I do this. Like, when I'm looking for, for images, references, and all that stuff, and I pick one, best believe I spend a good 10, 15 minutes really, really calculating how I'm going to go about it, where I'm going to start. I'm gonna finish and you know, Lego. That Lego technique, how I'm gonna build up this image, how am I gonna go about it? It's almost like grid, even though I don't use grid, I've never done it in my life, but I guess it kind of makes the sense. You know, like them, what's that color? It's not a coloring book, it's that book, you know, where you connect the numbers, where you go one, two, three, four, and all of a sudden you have an image. Some of you know, I don't know if it's still about, but when I was a kid, those things were about, and I actually liked them books when you had to connect it. It actually kind of did help me with my drawings interesting see this is what happens when you start talking things start coming back to you but i used to use that book quite a lot um because i just loved connecting one two three four you know kind of helping my numbers as well <laughs> you know i wasn't that good at maths but after that book what can i say man was good with the numbers in it <laughs> i'm joking uh, but yeah that's definitely tip number one really analyzing your reference photo try it out let me know what you think and if it helps tip number two leading off of tip number one is constantly looking at your reference photo now if you guys go back and watch some of the live streams i've done on youtube or on twitch and everything you will notice this is how my eyes are most of the time that's all i'm doing like if you really watch it watch it back you'll see me i'm constantly like this because obviously i have my ipad in front of me and obviously i'm drawing so i constantly look up that's all you're going to see my eyes are just going to be going like this why is that? Because I need to be looking at the thing that I am drawing often in order to be able to transfer that information over onto the page. It only makes sense, right? Now, you see some people when they draw, I'm, I'm just, this is an example, isn't it? Some people when they draw, they look at the reference photo and they go to the drawing and they won't look up for another five minutes. It's like, sorry, what? You got photographic memory now, yeah? Is that what we're doing? If you do, salute you. You are blessed. You are blessed with the memory. Yeah, turn off the reference photo. You don't even need it. <laughs> but most realistic, portrait realistic artists look up constantly. If anything, we look up at the reference photo more than our actual drawing itself. Um, but yeah, constantly transfer. You've got to be boom, 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 boom. There's nothing here. Oh, I know where it's going to. No, 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 no. You don't. Look up. Look up as much as you can. Like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. I got you. So that's my tip number two. Constantly keep looking at your reference photo. It's there to guide you. That's why it's there. Guide you. We're trying to create a realistic drawing. And the only way you're going to do that is by applying everything you see in the reference photo onto the page. And the only way you can do that is by looking at it. That's tip number two. Now let's go to tip number three. Tip number three is working in layers. Now I need to preach this one because some people out here, whoo, be working with them one layer things and you can't you can't do a realistic drawing with one layer it's it's just not possible 
I don't care how hard you think you could press with the pencil or the pen and make it look all dark and that, you need to work in layers. Layers, layers, layers. Our bodies and skins and everything is built up of layers, 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 and more layers. That's the only way you can create a realistic drawing is by working in layers. Work nice and lightly, building a drawing up, layer after layer after layer after layer, and you start to see all this toning. And with the whole layer thing, it goes back to analyzing the photo. If you analyze the photo, you can look at a base color. You'll be like, okay, I know what a base color is, is this. And after that, you'll be like, okay, I know what other color to use after that and everything. That's because you've analyzed the photo. So when it comes to actually doing a drawing, the layering shouldn't be that difficult because you spent the time before really analyzing your photo. So work in layers, guys, in order to create a realistic drawing. It is vital, 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 which then leads on to my tip number four, which is the finer details make the biggest difference. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna copyright that because I say that a lot. <laughs> the smallest details make the biggest difference. It is true. When it comes to realistic drawing, once you've done all the base and the layers and everything, it's the finer details, the extra wrinkle here, you know, the extra eyelash here. Oh, I didn't like the lighting in the eye for the little glow. You know, those type of little things are the ones that are gonna take your drawing from looking okay it's good it's nice to ooh, ay 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 caramba this is hot ooh, that's the little details that you've added and just makes you look saucy and just all them flavors and this oh what a spicy bolognese yeah but uh, i'm just going off topic am i hungry <laughs> i'm talking about food right now but yeah that is tip number four and now we are going to the final tip and probably the most important tip when it comes to realistic drawing you have to be patient that's it that's it i'm done i'm leaving i'm going i've got nothing else to say you have to be patient guys really and truly honestly patience is so important when it comes to realistic drawing like if you look at some of your best or your favorite portrait artists on youtube if you really ask them like if you look at the comments when people are oh how long did you spend the majority of them you're hearing 50 plus hours on a realistic drawing me on the other hand i don't i don't do them things that's just me because i class myself as a sketchism artist i don't class myself as a hyper realistic artist that's that's not me i'm not them guys that spend 50 60 hours on a piece i don't do that i got a job <laughs> My job requires me to do a certain amount of drawings every week. And if I was spending 50, 60 hours, they'll fire me. So yeah, <laughs> I've just never been a guy that does 50 plus hours. The, the longest drawing I've ever done is like 17. But for a lot of you guys, 17 hours is still a very long time. You know, a lot of people are like, whoa, you do 17 hours. Ooh, that's almost a day. Imagine the people that spend 50 plus, but their drawings look a gazillion times more realistic than mine because of what? They're patient and the hours you put in and i've also noticed my best drawings are the ones that take the longest because it gives me that time to add the extra details like i mentioned before the finer details make the biggest difference it gives me that time to add more detail more detail more detail and of course i do miss doing drawings like that but again the life i'm living right now and the work i have to do if i was to do that it would be like a side project type of thing something that i'll just do for fun um, that I work on every other day or whenever I have like multiple hours of free time, which I really don't But if I do I can just spend some hours on it put it away come back next day more hours on it put it away um, But most of my drawings that I get to do nowadays the max I would spend on it. It's around Eight hours max if I was to do a drawing. Yeah, um, but yeah, that is the final tip guys be patient I'm done I'm done. I'm just, I'm just done. I don't think I have anything else to say. I've said it all. So those are my top five keys when it comes to realistic drawing. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, make sure to please give the video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow and share it with someone that you feel like needs to hear this um, because I feel like I just want to share, you know, just try to share my knowledge with you guys. Um, if you disagree, please let me know why you disagree and comment below. Let's get a discussion going. And yeah, this tutorial is actually available on Patreon. If you are interested, make sure to head over to my Patreon. Link will be in the description. The moment you sign up for $5, you get access to every single tutorial on my Patreon. And they're coming out on a weekly thing. You know what I mean? I'm really enjoying 
helping people, helping them learn and helping them see when it comes to doing realistic drawing. Um, so yeah, if you want to go and learn how to draw from me, head over to my Patreon. I would love to have you join the family. Anyways, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.